Senator Bernie Sanders may not have won the White House, but his campaign is far from over. The former candidate is doubling down on the themes that powered his presidential run, and he's taking that message on the road. Yesterday, we spoke with the Vermont senator about his efforts to organize at the local level, rebuild the Democratic Party, really, something President Obama suggests was sorely missing for Democrats leading up to November. I and I think many Democrats throughout this country understand that we need to rebuild the Democratic Party. We need to make it into a grassroots party, that we need to reach out to working people, to young people all over this country. And on Sunday, there will be at least 40 rallies from Maine to California uh, telling the Republicans that, no, you're not going to repeal the Affordable Care Act, throw 30 million people off of health insurance, raise the cost of prescription drugs for seniors, devastate Medicaid. Uh, you're not going to do that. We're going to fight back and we're going to organize at the grassroots level. This is the beginning I of like what it. I hope will be an ongoing effort to create the Democratic Party into a grassroots organization. So, uh, Bernie, I'm certainly not uh, not t trying to get into anything about Hillary Clinton or the campaign she ran or the campaign she didn't run, but Barack Obama, obviously, when he was having his farewell speech, was talking about the importance of getting out there, knocking on doors, getting people organized again. Is that something that the Democratic Party has fallen short on over the past four to eight years? And is that why Republicans have made such gains on all levels of the government? Joe, I think the short answer is Y-E-S, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the Democrats, uh, you know, and, and we understand why, but there's a tremendous preoccupation with raising money, uh, and there has been a turning away from uh, the communities and the grassroots of this country. Um, I am happy to tell you uh, that just the other day in California, for example, uh, progressives who have been organized by the National Nurses United and by our organizations uh, captured a majority of the seats at the grassroots level of the Democratic Party. We are beginning to see that type of mobilization where people understand that real politics is door-to-door -door stuff, it's talking to our neighbors, it's standing up and fighting the big money interests who have so much power over the economic and political life of this country. That's exactly where it is. And you know, Joe, I would think that Bernie Sanders might be taking a vacation right now, but no. instead he is doing <laughs> the work again. That you, I think um, at some point along the way in the election, you noticed this in the media, and you definitely saw it with the Democrats, where they lost touch. And you almost wanted to say, you need to get out there in America and well, actually talk to people about what's bothering them. And, and here we and, go. And that's one of the well, things Mika. about how it was, we, you know, we've talked before about certain things seemed rigged against you from the start. And I don't know that people, people ever got past that. Some of your most uh, powerful supporters on the ground. Well, here's the point that I think Mika, you know, put a finger on the issue. If you look at the poorest states in this country, poorest states, where people have a minimum wage of seven and a quarter, where people don't have any health insurance, why in God's name are those people electing right-wing Republicans who are funded and controlled by big money interests? So what our job is, I'm gonna do everything that I can to create a 50-state party. You know, on Sunday, I will be going, along with Schumer, by the way, Chuck Schumer, to Michigan. But I'm gonna be going to Alabama. I'm gonna be going to Mississippi. We're going to do everything we can to fight voter suppression, to reactivate grassroots politics in this country. The truth is, the very rich are becoming much richer. 43 million living in poverty, middle class declining. We have got to bring people together to create a government and an economy that works for all. And I'm pledged to do everything that I can to make that happen. So, well, I would like to go on some of those trips. Yeah, we, we'll follow you if you let us. Oh, my God, we would love to have you. And I'll tell you something else that I think. You know, I did an event just with CNN the other day. We're doing something with MSNBC. We need to have town meetings, not just all these talking heads and all due respect on television. Go out, ask the mothers of this country. Right whether they can afford $15,000 a year for childcare. Ask a low-wage worker whether you can survive on nine bucks an hour. Talk to half to some of the elderly people in this country who have nothing in the bank 
as they face retirement. Ask a disabled veteran if they're making it on $13,000 a year, Social Security. Let's bring ordinary people back into the political discussion. When we do that, we're going to transform this country. And that's one of the great Everybody. ironies of this year uh, that right. we, and I know we talked a good bit in the beginning, the rich are getting richer, the poor are getting poorer, the middle class is getting squeezed, the working class is getting left behind. And in a year where your message, that message, all of that undeniable, that really took off uh, in the primary process for you, despite the fact, again, you, it seemed like you had everything stacked against you. How could it be in 2016 that that year that began with your inspirational campaign ended up with the election of a billionaire whose cabinet Actually, we hear co together, I, I, I don't know if the numbers are accurate or not, but I've read some, some stats that say his cabinet appointees alone uh, control more income personally than one third of all Americans. Well, that's a very good question, Joe. And I think honestly, it speaks to the failure of the Democratic Party. There was once a time in this country, FDR, Harry Truman, where working people were clear which party was on their side, which party was prepared to take on the big money interests. Uh, remember, remember Roosevelt talking about taking on the economic royalists. He was proud that they hated him. That's the kind of vision we need for the Democratic Party. If the billionaire class hates me or hates other progressives, we should be proud of that because we have got to start identifying with the working people who have seen their jobs go to China and Mexico, the people who are making 10 bucks an hour, the elderly people who can't afford prescription mm -hmm. drugs. Mm -hmm. We have got to bring those people together to fight the big money interests who have so much power today. I totally agree with you. I totally feel the chips were stacked against you in an unfair way. I supported your candidacy, and I understand everything you're saying, and I love what you're doing with these rallies. I also have to ask you, though, how important is is it to reach out to the new administration and to develop relationships there and to try and figure out where there can be some alignment? Is there any opportunity there yeah. that you see? I see some, sure. I don't think it makes sense to say, no, we're not going to work in any way, in any form with the Trump administration. Trump has talked appropriately about a collapsing infrastructure, roads, bridges, and water systems. If he is prepared to work with us, on rebuilding America's crumbling infrastructure and creating millions of jobs and doing it in a way that doesn't privatize our infrastructure or give tax breaks to billionaires, yes, let's work together. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Trump has talked a lot about our failed trade policy, NAFTA and permanent normal trade relations with China. If he is prepared to work with us on a trade policy which works for the American worker, and not just the CEO of large multinational corporations. Let's work together on those areas. But Mika, this is what I will tell you. There cannot be any compromise on bigotry. Trump's campaign has tried to divide us up. There can be no compromise there. There can be no compromise, in my view, on protecting American democracy, working against voter suppression that many Republican governors are trying to bring about. And in my view, there can't be any compromise on climate change bringing forward a nominee for the EPA, uh, Mr. Pruitt, mm -hmm. who does not believe in environmental protection, is crazy. It is insane. Climate change is real. It is one of the great threats to our planet. We have to transform well, our energy system. I, I was going to ask you about that because Scott Pruitt is, and we can say this as just a, a matter of fact, he is out of the mainstream, not only of, of what the overwhelming majority of, of, of science shows, but also what most Americans believe. How hard are you willing to fight to derail that nomination, considering all the committees that you chair that have a direct impact on the protection of America's environment, the world's environment? Well, I don't think it's either or. Uh, I think we have to look at each nominee, and, and frankly, you know, Trump had, he's a Republican, we know that. I did not expect him to nominate progressives uh, to be heads of major <laughs> agencies, all right? But he did not, he could have appointed center-right people. 
But in many instances, he appointed right-wing extremists like Mr. Pruitt uh, or Mrs. DeVos. Right. Uh, and I think, especially as a member of the Environmental Committee, I'm going to do everything that I can to oppose Pruitt's nomination. I'm very concerned about the minimum wage. The American people overwhelmingly understand that a $7.25 federal minimum wage is a starvation wage. In the last election, as bad as it was, I believe it was four states voted to raise the minimum wage. Republicans understand that. Democrats understand that. We need to have a secretary of labor who's going to be on the side of working people not just big business. And that's another example of a very bad appointment. All right, so if people want to get involved on Sunday, how do they do it? Go to BernieSanders.com. Uh, that's my website. They will find out the places in which rallies around the country are being held. All right. Wait a minute. How's your wife doing? How's Jane? She is great. She's a big fan of both of you. Uh, oh, well, we're a big fan we'd of We'd like you both to come back on the show. She you? is the best. Yeah, she you is great. You need to read her story. It's amazing. If you haven't read her story, our viewers, she's incredible. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.